everyone and welcome to Retro Core. It's been a long time since we've done one of these specials, but here we are with another. In this special, we're gonna be taking a look solely at the Game Boy. Now, filming a Game Boy is very, very difficult. So what I'm gonna use is one of these. Yes, this is the Super Game Boy. But don't worry, I'm not gonna be using this one because this one is no good. We're gonna be using this one. Oh yes, the Super Game Boy 2. So what's different about this Super Game Boy and the original? Let's take a look. The Super Game Boy 2 is the successor to the Super Game Boy and was released exclusively in Japan on January 30th, 1998. It was made as a response to complaints from Japanese Pokemon players who could not trade Pokemon with their friends because they only owned the original Super Game Boy which lacks the Link port. As well as adding the Link port, the Super Game Boy 2 also has other features. An LED power light was added to the hardware and five new screen border graphics that could be displayed while playing games were also added. Most noticeable, however, is the addition of an internal oscillator. Basically, the clock chip speed. Which means the Super Game Boy 2 can run games at the original 59.7Hz of the original handheld, as opposed to the Super Game Boy which lacked its own oscillator and thus ran games at the frequency of the console it was plugged into. So there you have it, that is the Super Game Boy 2 and for all intents and purposes, this is original Game Boy hardware and no better way to record Game Boy footage using original hardware than this. Unless you go and modify an original Game Boy to do TV out or something in RGB. Maybe that's not possible, maybe it is. Something I definitely can't do. So anyway, let's set this up and play some Game Boy games. Let's start off this Game Boy special with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The Turtles were massive during the life of the original Game Boy, with this game having a very special place in my nostalgia heart. In this first Turtles installment, you take control of all four Turtles. They act as lives. In a battle throughout five stages, going up against Rocksteady, Bebop, Baxter, Stockman, Shredder and Krang. Standard stage enemies include Foot Soldiers, Mausers, and Roadkill Rodney, amongst others. If a turtle runs out of health, he is captured, forcing you to select another turtle to pick up where your previous one left off. If all four turtles are captured, the game is over. Gameplay is rather basic, however, this was made when Konami were a quality company. Everything feels perfect with some excellent level design. If you take damage, it's because of your own lack of skill, not crappy stage design. This is what I loved about Konami games back then. Everything was possible as long as you knew how. This is Chiku Gaiho Gunzan from TNE Soft. This vertical scrolling shooter features a fantastic effect whereby it rapidly flashes the background layer to give an impression of parallax scrolling. This looks fantastic on original Game Boy screens, but awful on a TV, and this capture too. Thankfully, not all the stages feature this flickering. The game uses a basic configuration for the ship's control with one button doing the shooting and the other opening and closing your options. A high degree of difficulty exists in this game as opposed to most Game Boy scrolling shooters. Timing is essential to clear most stages and for defeating the end level bosses. 
There are five levels in the game, with the first four being freely chosen from the option screen. The fifth level, however, is unlocked after finishing the first four levels. If you have the ability to play this one on original Game Boy or Game Boy Lite, I'd give it a try. It really does look great on original hardware. Game Boy was not only a great 2D system, but did you know there were a few 3D games on it as well? Let's start off with Race Driving, developed by Argonaut Software. Yep, the same Argonaut behind Star Fox. This one contains three tracks, Stunt, Super Stunt and Autocross. Stunt and Super Stunt are the ones you want, as these really push the Game Boy's 3D abilities. While the frame rate isn't anything we could call smooth, it is impressive for such a simple system. As far as ports go, this is quite complete, however it does lack any of the 3D replays. This is yet again from Argonaut in conjunction with Nintendo R&D 1. Many describe this as Star Fox for the Game Boy. Of course, it's not. X is a first person space combat simulation game. You take control of the starship VIXIV, tasked with completing missions assigned by the training academy coach to protect the planet Tetamus 2 from being taken over by the mysterious alien race. There are 10 stages in total, referred in game as objectives. Under a time limit, objectives range from protecting a base from enemy fire, delivering a load of cargo to a certain area, or shooting down formations of enemies. Throughout the game, you'll need to fast travel to other parts of the map by entering tunnels. These are the most impressive. I would have loved to have seen a racing game of sorts using this viewpoint. In the outside areas, you would take to the skies at times, this is done by launching your ship off ramps. I love this. Such a getaway of taking flight, yet strangely satisfying. And here's Baseball 2000, a game that started life on the Atari ST, but even ended up being ported all over the place, including the Game Boy. Who needs Doom or Wolfenstein 3D when you have Baseball 2000? Nothing can beat blown away balls with mini balls. By the way, I'm being sarcastic just in case you couldn't tell. So five games down and more to come. What's been your favorite game so far on the Game Boy? Personally for me, it's this one here, Turtles. 
I really loved this original Turtles game on the Game Boy when it first came out. In fact, it wasn't me that owned the copy, it was my brother who had the Game Boy. And yeah, I mean, I wasn't really into the Game Boy, I didn't think it was going to be that good. But when he got Turtles for it, I was blown away. Great game. Anyway, let's take a look at some more Game Boy games. Konami once again with another quality entry into the Game Boy's library with Nemesis 2. Just one of their many shooters on the system. So why pick this one? Well, the game gives us a feel and look of a full-blown console game on a much less powerful device. In between stages, we get a transition that really makes this feel more like a console game of the time. Konami packed the screen full of enemies and projectiles without any major slowdown issues. There are some sprite flicker issues however, but still not bad enough to hinder the gameplay. Talking of which, this game handles like a dream. Really precise collision detection and responsive controls. The music is also fantastic, really putting you in the action. All of these points combined make Nemesis 2 seem more than it actually is, and that's not a bad thing. In fact, it puts many of the Super Famicom shooters of the same time period to shame. Here's one you don't see many people talking about. This is Hammering Harry Ghost Building Company. Just one of the many Hammering Harry platform games across the arcade and Nintendo systems. In this game, Harry is fighting more than just workers. He has to defeat an army of ghosts that have taken over the construction site, sewer, airship, jungle, and finally, the headquarters where he meets the evil ghost building machine. Like in all other Hammering Harry games, Harry attacks by clobbering things with his mallet. However, he can also upgrade this to a massive spike ball, which does a load more damage. This is especially satisfying. There are five stages in total, each ending in a boss fight. The stages also like to mix up the gameplay to add more variety, such as a shooting stage or a swimming level. Visually, Hammering Harry is a beautiful game, featuring detailed artwork, nice animation and parallax scrolling. It's easy one of the more visually impressive platformers on the system. Best of all, it plays really well. If you've never played a Hammering Harry game before, you could do a lot worse than checking out this Game Boy Adventure. <laughs> many great puzzle games on the Game Boy, with the most obvious choice being Tetris. Now while Tetris on the Game Boy is a pure classic, there are times when other puzzle games may be needed. For me, that game would have to be Puyo Puyo, and I'm happy to say there's a pretty good example of Puyo Puyo on the Game Boy. At first, I thought this would be impossible to play on a monochrome screen, but that's not the case. Compile have managed to come up with quite a few different shapes and shades to allow the player to simply see at a glance which Puyo Blob is which. Content wise, this port is also fully featured, with all the stages of the regular game and even all the music tracks. I do find it very amusing that the cutscenes all look like negative images. Makes me wonder if this was what Compile did rather than just redraw everything for the limited display of the Game Boy. Believe it or not, the Game Boy actually had some good fighting games on it. 
this is just one of them, Feel Bout Special, a game based upon the Neo Geo original. It's also one of those Game Boy games that plays in colour with extra fancy borders when played on a Super Game Boy. Very cool! If you've ever played one of the Western made Game Boy Fighters, you can be forgiven in thinking this controls like crap, but it really does not. Real Bout Special plays very well. We've got all the moves of the original game which are easy to pull off on the Game Boy's joypad. Sure, things are simplified with now only having two buttons, but we can still pull off all the moves and jump in and out of the background. A specific gameplay mechanic to the Fatal Fury series, which this is part of. Now if only we had a little speech. Ghostbusters 2 by HAL is not the same game as the NES version, although it is very similar. You begin by choosing two of the four Ghostbusters, although it doesn't matter who you choose since they all play the same. The first character selected is controlled by the player directly and carries the Proton Pack. The second Ghostbuster follows and carries the Ghost Trap. The object of each level is to capture a predefined number of ghosts before the time expires. At first you might find the controls odd, as button A fires the proton pack held by the character you move, while button B throws out the trap of the secondary character following you about. You'll soon get used to it though. While exploring the levels, any of the two remaining Ghostbusters, as well as the Ghostbusters accountant, Lewis, will occasionally show up. Touching them will provide power-ups and often swap with a selected Ghostbuster. Power-ups include vacuum guns, instant traps and invincibility. With 5 stages in total, this isn't the most time consuming of games, but it is a blast while it lasts, and different enough not to be like any other game on the system. So there we have it, 10 games on the Game Boy. Now of course there are many, many, many more great Game Boy games out there. Far too many to, you know, feature in one show. So let me know what's your favourite Game Boy game and maybe it will be featured in a follow-up video to this one. Till then guys, keep on gaming and enjoy your games. Take it easy. See ya.